you. Greg Smith. Thank you, uh, Mr Mundell. It is a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. I stand with the petitioners calling for HS2 to be scrapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Firstly, on cost grounds. At a time when the state is reaching deeper into people's pockets, I put it to this House that it is obscene to keep throwing money into this unwanted project. Yeah. The latest estimate for the total cost is £146 billion. That is ten times the original estimate. And will you also agree that COVID has completely changed likely travel patterns and the big commuting demand is going to be much reduced? So where is the argument for capacity, which was what the whole thing was meant to be about? Uh, I'm grateful for my right honourable friend's intervention, and he has read my mind, a point that I will come to shortly in my remarks. But firstly, the National Audit Office has noted that 50% of the costs for Phase 1 are still based on HS2 Limited's estimates, consultant designs, benchmarking information, rather than actual costs, real pounds and pence, agreed with industry, so that the overall cost could quite clearly rise again. And likewise, HS2's own revised cost estimates assume that they'll be able to find £2.8 billion worth of savings yet there has been a substantial dip into their contingency budgets already. We all know that the case for HS2 was ropey to start with. Some estimated only a 66 pence return for every taxpayer pound spent. And if rumours of the eastern leg being scrapped are true, that must surely make the business case utterly untenable. Then, as my right honourable friend for Wokingham said earlier, there is the aftermath of covid the Transport Select Committee heard last year that rail passenger numbers are unlikely to recover to more than three quarters of 2019's levels. Other estimates have it as low as 47%. Surely, the pandemic and new working patterns should allow for fresh eyes on high speed too. Although I fear the cat was somewhat let out of the bag by Doug Okavy, who at the Transport for the North Annual Conference last year was quoted as saying the construction industry was in a very fragile position, going on to justify his recommendation as preventing harm to the construction industry. That is a purely unacceptable rationale. Yeah. Which leads me on to environmental destruction. Hedgerows, trees, nature reserves like Calvert Jubilee in my constituency destroyed. Water quality at risk, wildlife at risk. Environmental standards that were agreed, now not being met as well documented by the Chilterns Conservation Board and the Berkshire, Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire Wildlife Trust. And now in my constituency we have uncovered evidence of limestone being applied to land taken, which will render it useless for any future agricultural use. No prizes for guessing what the end game is there. There is more to this gravy train than just the train. Worst of all, it brings real human misery to my constituents and constituents up and down the line of route. The endless road closures, the destruction of local rural roads to conditions that are just not safe to travel on, the grossly unfair way that landowners and farmers are treated, people being left in a state of severe stress and anxiety, not knowing what is going to happen to their land and their homes and their businesses, not for days and weeks, but for months and years. And I'm devastated to tell this House that from among the hundreds of people in this state of stress and anxiety, there have now been cases of people suffering heart attacks and losing their lives, which I fear is not a coincidence. So let's look at the reality. Let's call time on HS2 right now and end this waste of money and destructive project. Yeah.